Good morning, and welcome to the 160th annual commencement ceremony of Dunkirk High School. As a friendly reminder, can I ask you to please turn off your ringtones on your cell phones out of respect for the graduates. Now, please rise and remain standing while Dunkirk's own JROTC presents the colors to be followed by Senior Class President Josue Rosario leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance and select chorus's seniors Alex Charles, Walter Casey, and Genesis Diaz singing of our national anthem. Mr. Burnett, I think I need some help. You think I should call Larry to the stage? What do you guys think? Should we call up the man, the myth, and the legend, Larry Pacheco? Larry! Command him. Tell Larry to come on up. Larry, can you please come to the stage? Just so you guys know, Larry did our Pledge of Allegiance every single day this year, so we feel like it's fitting to have Larry help. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please rise.
Now, will you please take a seat and get comfortable? Good morning. I'd like to welcome this morning some of the people on stage here to honor the class of 2018. The members of the Board of Education, the, su uh, the Superintendent of Schools, Dr. James Tracy, Mr. Stephen O'Brien. We have many of your principals from grade school, teachers from kindergarten to high school, community members, and of course, your family and friends. A big round of applause for the Class of 2018 Advisors. They planned a beautiful prom, organized your senior trip, led fundraisers, and spent countless hours during homecoming weeks and made sure all of your senior activities went flawlessly. Class Advisors really become like your class mom. And we all know that one mom, Mrs. Lugo Alfaro, became a class advisor so that she could keep a close eye on her son, Josue. <laughs> Josue will be attending Roberts Wesleyan College next year and will be playing soccer. So I think it is a great time to... <laughs> so I think it's a great time to introduce the new goalie for Roberts Wesleyan soccer team, Mrs. Lugo Alfaro. Keep a close eye that way. Uh, and we cannot forget Mrs. Happy Gilmore. Although you changed your last name, you will forever be known to this class as just Poe. A big thank you to Mrs. Janine Van Way for organizing this event. And lastly, most importantly, congratulations to you, the class of 2018. Oh, how time flies. As you sit here today, I hope you think back to your freshman year and reflect on all the anticipation and anxiety you felt as you entered the high school for the first time. As a class, you have survived the dabbing craze, whatever the quan is, and the whip, which Miss Larravee would like to personally thank Sabian Smith for making her an expert at. As sophomores, you found a way to make sickness hilarious, inventing a disease known as the click clack, and a remedy, the click clack dance. As juniors, you saw the return of homecoming floats, and our first experience of hosting food trucks at the homecoming game. And of course, many of you played an instrumental role in the football team's success and all the enjoyment the community got to have watching you play at New Era Field. Yeah. And now, as seniors, we've watched you make memories. The stock market challenge trip, the business field trip to New York City, and of course, getting absolutely soaked at the Cave of the Winds at Niagara Falls. There's the tubing trip at Peak and Peak and the JROTC ball. You all have many accomplishments to speak of. Twelve seniors are members of the Business and Marketing Honor Society of New York State. Rebecca Mikas did finally make it over the climbing wall on the field bio field trip. That was actually the most amazing accomplishment. Of course, there was the girls' soccer team victory over Fredonia. The football team winning their first division title since 1974. and softball's 9-4 victory over Fredonia, giving the Lady Marauders their first winning season since 2012. And I'll bet, Alexis Tofel, you'll never forget what it felt like to play at Buff State for the girls' sectional championship in basketball. And how do you mention athletic success without highlighting the accolades of Emily Hamlin, a six-time state competitor in track, and two, excited, 
and two-time state champion, and she sets multiple school records. But what might be the most impressive is that even though she's a track star, she will be playing Division I softball for Tennessee in college. Which leaves us all wondering, will you jump over Dr. Tracy as you receive your diploma, or will you slap hit it out of his hand? <laughs> I would be remiss if I didn't highlight Alex Charles, Walter Casey, Genesis Diaz, Julia Bennett, and Gabe Hyde Cruz leading roles in the, music, in the musical Little Shop of Horrors. This was the first time Dunkirk has ever had a top 10 nomination for the Kenny Awards and did in fact win a Kenny Award for the best costumes. Jared DeJesus and Madeline Gokey's artwork was selected and highlighted at the JCC Art Exposition Competition. What an honor indeed. And speaking of great works of art, how is Wilfredo DeJesus' hair looking today? <laughs> look, look, Jamal. There you go, buddy. On a personal note, this is a bittersweet moment for me. I have a few family members in this graduating class, and it will be sad to see them leave. Of course, you know, Devon Farnham is my cousin. <laughs> Julia Bennett is a self-proclaimed daughter of mine. And of course, my auntie, Jaden Ortiz. <laughs> so one last question before we start the introductions and get this event underway. Is Julia Fred crying yet? <laughs> Class of 2018, give yourself a round of applause for a job well done. I'd like to take a minute to introduce our first speaker today. Dr. James Tracy has been with the Dunkirk City School District for two years now. He has brought with him 44 years of experience in education and continues to push Dunkirk forward. Although he may be a Penn State fan, Yvonne Ortiz, you will learn in a few months why that is a huge problem when you get to Ohio State. Ladies and gentlemen, the superintendent of the Dunkirk City School District, Dr. James Tracy. I know I'm, I'm supposed to only welcome, but I, I, I will tell you, I'm going to have to take a few minutes. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome all of you, and I would like to uh, congratulate the parents, grandparents, all the relatives that are here to see the graduates graduate today, because uh, you were their first teacher, and they're here because of the work that you did. I'd also like to congratulate my teachers and my administrators and the school board, because all of the work that they've done has helped you get here. But most of all, I want to congratulate the class of 2018 that are about to become alumni of the Dunkirk City School District. Congratulations to you. Now, being an educator, a teacher, I can't let a minute go by that I can't, you know, I really want to give you at least one last lesson or some advice or pieces of wisdom before you walk out. It's just the nature of us educators. We want to try to give you everything we can. So I would like to start off by uh, indicating to you that one of the things you, I'm going to ask you to do is decide, make sure you decide what it is you want to do, who you want to be, and I would ask you to dream big. Dream big. And don't let anybody, don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. You're a Dunkirk graduate. There isn't anything you can't do or be, as long as you put your heart, your mind, and your soul to it. The second thing I'd like to do is, I always look at life as kind of a ladder with a, a number of rungs that you have to climb to get to where you want to go. In fact, Thomas Huxley had a really great quote that I've always liked. He says, a rung on a ladder is nothing more than a place to rest your one foot so that your other foot can go someplace higher. That's kind of like your lives. One of the rungs that happened, your parents were involved with you, your first time you stood and the first steps you took and the excitement that happened in your households. Another one would be when you entered kindergarten. That's another rung. Another one is when you left school three, four, five, or seven. Another one when you left the middle school to come to that frightening high school. This is a rung that you're now standing on 
as you leave high school and your foot is going somewhere higher. And I, I know that some of you have already decided where that next rung is. So just curious so the parents can see. How many of you are going to go into the armed services to serve this great country? Raise your hands. Congratulations and thank you. Outstanding. How many of you are going to enter the work world? How many of you are going to start right, right away and enter the work world? A few of you. You're going to get on the job training, which is a good, good way to learn as well. Congratulations to you. How many of you are going to go off to additional education, whether it's a one year, two year, or four year school? That's amazing. I mean, that is amazing when we see those kinds of hands go up. Our, our students have already determined where the next rung is, and they're heading that direction. I would like to ask you to also pay attention to one thing that can cause some issues or problems with you as you go from rung to rung, as you reach the, to the stars that you want to become. And that is, there's only one constant as you go through these things, and that's change. <laughs> the only thing that I know will happen to you for sure is you'll change, and change will happen to you. Change happens. That's, there's nothing you can do about it. Everything else can stay constant in your life, but change is going to happen. And there's three things you can do with change. One is you can try to avoid it and fight it. You will lose. In this world, you people, you, you young ladies and gentlemen, are going to see change, at a much, change happen at a greater rate than we have ever seen. It is accelerating. It is amazing how much change is happening every single day in this world. So if you try to avoid it or fight it, you will lose. And you will not reach the height of the ladder you want to reach. So the second thing you could do is you could kind of flow with it. Embrace it even. And you will win. And good things will happen to you. But what I'm going to challenge you to and ask you to do is consider yourself doing the third thing. And that is where you become the change agent. As you learn and as you grow, whether it's getting a quarter of a million dollars like Nate got to go to Clarkson University, one of the top engineering schools in the country, or if it's actually starting on a job. As you learn and grow, please think about trying to be the change agent, someone who's going to make things better for mankind, for the people that live with us and around us. Try to be the change agent, if you would. So, clase del 20, 10 y 8, muchos felicidades y mis mejores deseos sigan y cambian el mundo. For those of us that aren't sharp enough to speak two languages, what I said was class of 2018, congratulations and best wishes. Go out there and change the world. Best wishes. Miriam, can you give Dr. Tracy a grade on that Spanish real quick? <laughs> Need to sit in the class. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I have come to know our salutatorian as one of the most genuine, sincere, and intelligent students I have known in my time as a teacher. In her spare time, when she is not earning every business honor there is, she excels in dance. But it didn't start that way. The first conversation I ever had with Sam, she shared a story about how she stole a puppy from a random man on the street. I spent a good couple of weeks pondering how she managed to be second in the class after that. And then, she apparently felt comfortable enough with me to start taking my food every fourth period, my Pop-Tarts, my snacks, and my yogurt, along with TOEFL, Sabian, Yvonne, and Hannah. After some time, and feeling that maybe I had earned my street cred by allowing her to steal my food, I asked Sam about the puppy. And I came to realize and find out my understanding of the story was way off. She, in fact, was saving the little dog. And that is the Sam we know, compassionate and caring, a person who looks to do the right thing, and because of that, I know you will be wildly successful. So without further ado, I would like, like to introduce the class of 2018 salutatorian who is taking her talents to the University of Buffalo to study business administration with finance and data analytics. 
the next Fortune 500 CEO, Miss Samantha Mosier. We get the pleasure of uh, putting the salutatorian, second in the class, medal, and congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> We're gonna have to have you bend down. <laughs> Can you take that side? I take this side. You don't want to mess it. You go gold. Okay, Hey, I got to read your hat. <laughs> Good morning. I would like to welcome all parents, family, friends, school board members, administration, teachers, and fellow classmates of the class of 2018 as we celebrate the end to our high school careers with the beginning of the next chapter in our lives. First, I would like to thank the people that helped me to get to this position. Thank you to my mom and dad for your constant love and support throughout everything. Thank you to my brother Joel for being someone that I could go to and my number one supporter. Thank you to Mrs. Wakeley and Mrs. Alfaro for being two strong women that I could go to for guidance and for constantly listening to me complain and still finding a way to put up with me. And a very special thank you to Mr. Petro. It was in his math class that he said a quote that has resided with me ever since. It's not about the answer, it's about the journey. Surely, he was referring to calculus at the time. However, this quote can easily be applied to our class and the amazing journey that we have had together. It seems like so long ago when we first walked through the doors of Dunkirk High School as excited young freshmen that did not know what was to come. Now, we have classmates becoming scientists, brave friends joining the armed forces, and athletes pursuing their dreams at a collegiate level. When we first started high school, we were all eager and a little bit nervous to finally be starting the final four years of our lives as children. It seems like time flew by as now it is time to finally say goodbye to the lives we are so comfortable and familiar with. Over these past four years, beautiful friendships have been formed, lessons have been learned, and memories that will never be forgotten have been made. We have learned to stand up for what we believe in, to help others whenever possible, and we have definitely mastered learning to speak our minds and being ourselves. One of the most important lessons that we are able to take away from our time spent in high school is to embrace change. Change, especially in situations as big as graduating, can seem very frightening, but not all change is bad. Through this milestone, we are able to truly become who we want to be, and the doors to endless opportunities are opened. We have spent the past four years of our lives learning to embrace change, and now it is time that we do just that. Our class has made history in numerous ways, with each person bringing their own unique talents and strengths, making memories that will last a lifetime. On class night, we were able to see many of them in the wonderful slideshow that Giselle created. Some of these memories include our school musical performing at and winning a Kenny, our track athletes excelling at states, girls soccer finally beating Fredonia, and members of our class helping both the basketball and football teams to take their seasons very far. These talents helped to define each of us, and our class would not have been able to be this successful if it was not for each individual's amazing attributes. Whether you're artistic like Hannah, musical like Torino, tech savvy like Tim, book smart or athletic, we each are welcomed and have our own place in the class of 2018. It's hard to stand up here and try to give advice for the future when we're all in the same situation. Our future is unknown. No matter how much planning we have put into our future endeavors, we do not truly know what the real world is going to end up throwing at us. We do not know if one of our classmates is going to be the next Steve Jobs or find amazing scientific research, or if one of us will win the Nobel Peace Prize. But my bets are on Rick. However, I do know that whatever the world may throw at us, we are going to be able to make the best of it. We are going to chase our dreams and make them a reality. 
Since that very first day of freshman year, we have left our own lasting mark on Dunkirk High School. But not all of us realize just how greatly Dunkirk left its own mark on us. As the last few school days started to come to a close, even the ones who were the most vocal about wanting to be finished with high school started to quiet. It finally hit that we were leaving behind something that was so familiar and dear to us. We are leaving behind an amazing journey, and now we are on to the next. Congratulations to the class of 2018. We finally made it. <laughs> Would the parents of Samantha, Michael, and Kathy please stand and be recognized? This year's valedictorian is an accomplished young man. But instead of highlighting his countless hours of community service, awards, and accolades, and achievements, I would like to share a little story about Josue that I believe has shaped him, whether he knows it or not, to being a humble, caring, and empathetic person guided by his faith. Josue is a miracle. As a baby, he was exposed to carbon monoxide, and as he will tell you, only one minute of time made a difference for him. His maturity and humility can only come from an understanding there is a greater purpose and is evident as soon as you get to know him. You learn that he is a young man of character, driven to succeed with a great sense of humor. On a personal note, Josue is the first student I have ever had that has finished his assigned reading of Brave New World and then asked if he could read the other two options, Fahrenheit 451 and 1984, just because he was inquisitive. A few months ago, I gave him a copy of Fahrenheit 451 so my gift to you today is a copy of 1984. Now you can talk with your new college roommates about that and I have that for you when you come up here. Attending Grove City College to major in mechanical engineering, the class of 2018 valedictorian, future NASA engineer, Mr. Josue Rosario. We'll get better at this. <laughs> Good man. You know, looking at this speech today, I'm not beginning to like it. I don't like it at all. Well, let me just... <laughs> Made my own. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, family, friends, and of course, my fellow graduates. I am glad to see you all here today, and I hope you're enjoying the ceremony so far. First and foremost, I would like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Without him, <laughs> without him, I feel like I would not be the person I am today. I would like to give an enormous thank you to my father, Sixty Rosario, my mother, Nancy Rosario, my grandfather, Ruben Gonzalez, and the rest of my supportive family. I can go on and on to explain all the help and sacrifices you made for me, but that would make my speech too long. So thank you once again, and I love you guys. I would also like to to give a big thank you to all of our Dunkirk High School staff, ranging from the coaches, to the custodians, to the teachers, and to the workers in the front and guidance office that have dealt with us for the last four years. I would like to say thank you to our class advisors, Mrs. Alfaro and Mrs. Gilmore. Finally, I would like to thank our principal, Mr. O'Brien, the Dunkirk School Board members, and our administrators. And I believe that all these people deserve a round of applause.
I'm going to be honest with you guys. In order to begin my speech, I had to seek a lot of advice from very close friends and staff here at Dunkirk High School. Some told me to shout them out. Some told me to sing the song, You're Welcome, from Moana. And others said just to say a few words, drop the mic, and walk off stage. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. I would like to say the class of 2018 is the best class to come out of this high school. Thank you. See, this is where I dropped the mic, or flipped the podium, which I was told not to do, and walk away. Instead, we are here to celebrate this major milestone. I would like to truly start off this speech with a quote from a famous philosopher slash street poet named Drake, which states, started from the bottom, now we're here. <laughs> class of 2018, we made it. We entered high school. Most of us probably knew that this class of 2018 was special. Over the last four years, we have achieved greatness on many levels in and out of the classroom. Add this all together, I would like to claim that this class of 2018 is the greatest class to come out of Dunkirk. Yes, that's a bold statement to make. But I mean, let's take a look at the facts. We survived numerous circumstances, such as Ebola, Zika, the whip, the nene, the shoe, puberty, and the deadliest of them all, not senioritis, but the fierce debate between who is the greatest of all time, LeBron James or Michael Jordan. <laughs> and I would like to claim the GOAT is LeBron James. <laughs> now relax, Michael Jordan lovers, it's just an opinion. No need to debate now. Especially on a special day like this when the class all agrees on one thing. No more school lunches. In doing some more in-depth research, other evidence to prove that we are the greatest class to come out of Dunkirk is by looking at what we as a class plan to do after graduation. Some of us are planning to go to college, some close, some far, but all trying to achieve one goal. While others will be entering trade schools or joining the workforce, as well as some of us will be joining the military. And I'd like to thank you for your service ahead of time. And I think another round of applause is necessary. Now, I would also like to share with you some lessons that I have learned in high school. I can say I learned many lessons, like sweatpants are better than jeans, which I haven't worn since middle school, or how to prepare for an AP Spanish test, which only three or four of us were prepared for. It was a long day that day, trust me. But the best lesson I learned is to simply be yourself. It is the advice that everyone is told to do, yet gets judged upon for doing so. I learned that being yourself was the hardest thing to do in high school. But at the end of this year, I feel like we truly found out how to be ourselves. I believe this is the most important lesson because in the real world, someone is always going to judge us for the actions we take, the thoughts we believe, and there's nothing we can do to prevent it. It is the harsh reality, but we should stick together to our true selves and never change. Mother Teresa said it best. People are often unreasonable, irrational and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may, people may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some unfaithful friends and some genuine enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and sincere, people may deceive you. Be honest and sincere anyway. What you spend hours creating, others can destroy overnight. Create anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, some may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today will often be forgotten. Do good anyway. Give it the best you have and it will never be enough. Give your best anyway. And the final analysis is between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. Class, there will be those who judge you, but just be yourselves because other than a close couple of friends and family members, at the end of the day, all you got is yourself.
as our time together comes to an end, remember, when someone doubts you, just tell them what LeVar Ball, a wise man, once said. Stay in your lane. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm just kidding. The real quote to remember is from Walt Disney, which states, Around here, we don't look backwards for very long. We keep moving forward, opening new doors and doing new things because we're curious, and curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. Not only should we cherish the memories we made together, but I challenge you to keep moving forward and prove we are the greatest class to come out of Dunkirk. Thank you. Josue, before you leave, one more lesson I think you need to learn. You never leave an open mic on the MJ LeBron debate. Isaiah, who is it? Thank you. <laughs> Would the parents of Josue, 6'2", and Nancy, please stand and be recognized. Now, I'd like to introduce the man who has led you through your high school journey. He is known for wearing two things, his heart on his sleeve and terribly colorful socks. Seniors, this is the last time you will have to listen to his guidance and inspiration, the guy with the fist bump known as OB, the only principal you've ever known, Mr. Stephen J. O'Brien. Class of 2018! Okay, I also want to thank a few people, and then I'll get into boring you to death with a speech I didn't prepare. Like many of you, I put it off to the last minute, and so that I have nothing up here, like Josue, I'm going to read a story. But anyway, I would like to thank the Board of Education, and of course, the student ambassador, Yvonne Ortiz. Dr. Tracy and Teresa Graves, our uh, leadership at the very top, and then our DAA, our DTA, and our CSEA, which is our administrators, our teachers, and then all the other people who work together to make school safe and a place where you guys can learn. I also want to give a special thanks to the parents who are here today and all the loved ones, so thank you all for what you've done from kindergarten till this day. I want to give a special thanks to the guidance department, Ron, Sarah, and Nicole. I think they've all helped you dot your I's and cross your T's. And I want to give a super special thanks to Julie Waker. I liken Julie to the firemen out west who are trying to put out these four acres of fires. And I go over to help her out. I give her bundles of wood. Um, and I always wonder how these people are going to put those fires out. And Mrs. Wakeley methodically and somehow is able, which I think each and every one of you know, be able to put these fires out and help me immensely. So thank you to all those people. Okay. There's always consistent messages that people like to give at commencement time. Dr. Tracy, you know, follow your dreams. Don't be afraid to follow them. Go out and be an agent of change. Your uh, salutatorian and valedictorians gave you great lessons. And there's a metaphor, metaphorical lesson that I want that always comes up, and that is if you get knocked down or if you fall down, you can't be afraid to get up. You don't want to give up. So I want to read a story, but it's a literal story about getting up. It was written, in, it was written on June 20th, 2003. It was in Sports Illustrated, and I've read this story probably, I'm exaggerating, but over a thousand times. The, the, the story was written on June 20th because a reporter from Sports Illustrated went to Anderson, South Carolina to do a follow-up on a report Sports Illustrated did on a, on a student called Radio who was very involved with the high school football team. He was a, a mentally challenged student, a person in the community and the football team brought him in and embraced him and on June 24th in 2003, 
a movie was coming out based on this story, based on this person's life, called Radio, and it uh, starred Cuba uh, Gooding Jr. So when the uh, reporter got to the town and wanted to get some updated information and see how the football team and radio were doing, he found an amazing, amazing cross-country runner, uh, Ben Comer. Ben Comer is 31. I'm not good at figuring out stuff in social media, but he's working in a hospital. I believe he works in a pharmacy, and I think he's a pharmacy technician. He has graduated from college. So here's a story I'm going to read. Like I said, I've read it about a thousand times. Why do they come? Why do they hang around and watch the slowest high school cross-country runner in America? Why do they want to see a kid finish a 3.1 mile race in 51 minutes when the winner crossed the finish line at 16 minutes? Why do they cry? Why do they nearly break their wrists when they're applauding a junior who falls flat on his face every race? Why do they hug a teenager who could be beaten by any other student running backwards? Why do they do it? Why do all of his teammates go back out on the course and run the last 10 minutes of the race with him? Why do the other team's runners go out and run the last 10 minutes of the race with him? Why do both girls' teams go out and run the last 10 minutes of the race with him? You see, it's because Ben Comer never quits. Ben Comer has a heart just slightly larger than the Chicago height, but he also has cerebral palsy. It's a disease that does not mess with his intellect. He gets A's and B's in school, but it seizes his muscle, contorts his body, and ruins his balance. Yet there he is, competing for Hannah High School's cross-country team in Anderson, South Carolina, dragging his wrecked body over rocks, fallen branches, and dishes, and people ask why. Ben says, it's because I feel like I've been put here to set an example. Anybody can find something they can do and do it well. I like to show people that you can either stop trying or you can pick yourself up and keep going. It's more fun to keep going. If any of us were faced with what Ben faces, we would quit. Imagine what it feels like for Ben to watch his perfectly healthy twin brother Alex or his younger brother Chris run like rabbits for Hannah High. Imagine never beating anybody to the finish line. Imagine dragging along that stubborn left side, pulling the unbending tire iron of a left leg around in front of him, then pogo sticking off of it to get back on his right leg. Worse, he lifts his feet so little that he trips on anything, a rock, a branch, the crack between aluminum tiles. But he won't let anybody help him up. He's not embarrassed, he's mad. Worse, he falls hard. His brain can't send signals fast enough for his arms to cushion his fall, so he often smacks his head or his face or his shoulders. Sometimes his mom cannot watch. I've been coaching here for 31 years, says Hannah Heiss, Chuck Parker. I've never but anybody with the drive of Ben, and I don't think there's one inch of that body that I have not bandaged. Ben finishes a race looking like a boxer after a 12-round fight. He's bloody, he's bruised, but he's never beaten. Oh he, ne oh, he loses. He always loses. He barely finishes ahead of sunset, forget the other runners. But he's never quit. Through the rain, through the wind, and all of his welts, he crosses the finish line. Lord, it's a sight when he gets there, clunking away with his shepherd, uh, shepherded by all those kids, while the cheerleaders screech, and parents try to holler encouragements, only to find nothing can come out of their voice boxes. The other day, when he was coming towards the finish line with his huge army of friends, his face stoplight red, bloody and tortured, that laborious gait eating up the earth inch by inch, when he fell not ten yards from the line, there was a gasp from the parents and a second silence from the kids. But then Ben went through his 15-second process of getting his bloody knees under his body, his balance back, and his forward motion going. He finished. From the roar of the crowd, you'd have thought he just won the Boston Marathon. Words cannot describe that moment, his mother says. I watched grown men just stand there and cry. All right, this seems like a pretty damn somber story to be reading right here at graduation. But there's a literal message of, you know, what he does every day. And like I said, he's 31 years old and he's working. So the message I do want to give you, I guess, is a literal message. It's more fun to keep going 
than it is equipped. Thank you, class of 2018. <laughs> Dr. Chase, Dr. Tracy and the Board of Education, I want to certify that every student here who is graduating today has met or exceeded New York State's requirements for a diploma. Thank you again, class of 2018. For an entire year, you listened to me talk to you guys about the importance of civic responsibility in government. There may be no greater example of that than right here on this stage. While many may think the Board of Education members do it for the fame and the fortune, they volunteer their time and talents to make sure you are getting the best possible education the district and community can offer. It is our hope that one day you will be sitting up here giving out diplomas to the class of 2048. Here to assist with the presentation of diplomas is School Board Vice President Claudia Zerbaki. Which is 
Take your time, Alan. We're here for you. <laughs> One more round of applause for the class of 2018. This graduating class apparently has a very unique way of being introduced to people. A new, another student told me I just had to meet Felix Garcia when he became my student second semester. The reason? Felix had the most amazing abs ever. In fact, he was born with a six pack. I was not sure how to respond then, and well, frankly, I still don't. Would you please welcome your class vice president, who is heeding the noble call of joining the military, the future chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff for the U.S. Army, Felix Garcia. Just so everyone knows, I owe Felix a Kit Kat bar here. Don't let it go to your abs. Hey, you guys. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Felix Garcia. I'm glad to be here in front of you guys all today. I'm the vice president of the class of 2018. Many know me from previous sports I've played throughout my journey to high school. And some may also know me as the student that Flash missed, right? Who put that down? <laughs> that was, this kind of makes things a little awkward now. Yeah. But forget that. I'm here today to send you guys luck and reflect back on our four years of Duncan High School. We've grown together, some from elementary, or maybe just this past year, you've grown a relationship that's just truly unbreakable. I can truly say this class standing in front of me would do big things in college, or the service like myself, or any career of your choice. I'd also like to say thank you to the class advisors, Poe and Lugo Faro. If you two beautiful ladies could please stand up. Please give them a round of applause. Thank you for all the work you ladies have done for the class of 2018. We truly appreciate all the stress we've laid on you through our years of Dunkirk High School. You've carried us through and picked us up back from the last four years of Dunkirk High School. If there's truly anything I loved about going to Dunkirk High School, it was events like the pep rally that we won all four of years. Yeah. Yeah, what can I say? Our class can get it down anytime, anywhere. Yeah. Another thing I'm sure us seniors won't forget is our Dunkirk rivalry with those dang hillbillies. Yeah. It's just those events that us of their different characteristics and backgrounds unite and become as one, one city overall. For example, when the basketball team made it to Buff State, or the year our football team got to the semifinals to make it to States, yes. to this day, moments like that are the reasons why I'm proud to call myself a Marauder. Yes. I leave here with anything. I hope it's that, remember, to think. Think. Think about the effects of your actions. Please don't be that one person that ruins everything because of one mistake. For if you don't believe me, look up men like OJ, A-Rod. These men suffered losing respect of many teams, fans, family. One mistake that they could easily prevented. Think about it. Was it really worth it? Seriously, though, be careful who you're around. Have supporters on your side, the real ones, not the ones that just come and go. Prevent agitators. These people will either slow you down or ruin your future plans. I know you guys have great plans to show this world. Now go make them happen. And show the world that we, the Marauders, are not just athletic, good-looking, and hype dancers, but are also educated and dedicated students that can get the task in front of us, behind us. As much as I want to stay here and go Donald Trump, I leave here today only hoping many of us could meet up and share our accomplishments with one another later in a long lifetime. I pray for us to reunite at our class reunions and special events so we can re continue to spark up the bond of being members of this awesome class of 2018. Thank you and best of luck.
Would the parents of Felix, Felix and Angie Garcia, please stand for recognition? Now we're here for Felix instead of Alan. Okay. <laughs> if you are looking for a young man with a dynamic personality and charisma to captivate a room, look no further than to our DHS Spirit Award winner. This young man helped organize the student vigil and proved students can have a voice. He was voted most likely to be mayor of Dunkirk, so I think we will be seeing him around for a long time. Here to help you turn your tassels, the future mayor, Sabian Smith. Can I just get a round of applause for the class 2018 one more time? I get used to that. But um, much appreciation to everybody that's here, my family included, um, from down south and stuff like that, and all you guys' families. <laughs> um, a lot of you guys in this class showed me a lot, whether it hurt me to make me better or it just made me good in general. Um, I low-key love all of you, so I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to leave on a bad note with anybody, so let's just get rid of that right now. <laughs> so, could the class of 2018 please stand and join me in turning your tassels? Would the father of Sabian, Dana Smith, please stand for recognition? Yeah. You guys may be seated. Before we leave, please remember, seniors, to pick up your diplomas. To the audience, please allow the graduates and the people on stage to exit with the recessional music. This is it, yep. Well, that's it. You've turned your tassels. You are graduates. So now we are left with just two sets of questions. Those unanswered and those that will be answered in time. First, those that are unanswered. Sierra Vasquez, what did you put in that dip in Mrs. Pooch's taste test that made it so amazing? Maddie Goki, why did you eat the stale cheese puff that was on the floor? Emily Jankowski, what are you going to do with all those hats you bought at Darien Lake? <laughs> Who are we going to page when we have a, a computer emergency now that Tim Smith has graduated? <laughs> <sighs> Why did Alexis Tofel select Mrs. Burnett to share her student teacher lunch with instead of me? <laughs> and maybe the most perplexing, how did Jazzy Rivera pull off a crushed velvet sparkly shoe and for the second year in a row, man pre-pant prom wear so well? We will, we will miss you, Bruno Mars. And now, the questions that will be answered in time. After watching Noah Sabillo dance at the pep assembly, and homecoming, and the sad assembly, and prom, and well, wherever there is a beat, Will he be invited to every one of your weddings to be the wedding dancer? 
Will Andre Lockett's nickname follow him to the military and be known as Sergeant Snuggle Monster? <laughs> Can Braden Geffert's bicep flex be any more intense? <laughs> Courtney Bailey, how am I going to decorate my house now that I won't have your beautiful crafts that you made for us? P.S. We did name our daughter Bailey after you. And speaking of daughters, Yvonne Ortiz, I meant it when I said it. I hope our daughter turns out to have your determination and resolve mixed with just a little sassiness. <laughs> I won't mention his name, but will the person with the best kept secret, an angelic voice, end up on the TV show, The Voice, as part of Team Blake or Team Adam? What do you think, Torino Soto? No question here, just one name, Alan Wasserman. And lastly, Will Julia Fred follow her career after she is done with Niagara University at Disney playing the role of Moana? Julia, are you crying yet? <laughs> In closing, it's always good practice to share a quote from someone wiser and more accomplished than yourself. I could have picked something from Aristotle or Confucius, but it seems far more prudent and wise to share these words to live by. A challenge, part of a speech given at a JCC public speaking contest by Isaiah Velez, quote, to think that we as a society tend to treat people the way we think they want to be treated. We fail to try to understand and try to feel the way they want to be treated. My message here today is to further show us that simply understanding each other and showing empathy can unite us in ways that some people would think is impossible. Being available for people, making time for others, and going out of your way to show kindness and empathy for others is what will really make a change for the better. So, it is with Isaiah's challenge we send you out into your future endeavors. Good luck, and from all of us, thank you. Please join me in one last round of applause for your class of 2018.
why you came here to watch your son graduate. Well, yeah. <laughs> you coming with us now? No. Uh -huh. You coming with us now? of 2018 Dunkirk High School. We're all going outside with their families, going to take pictures. You guys know the routine.